Hi everybody, my name is Hilda. Today's topic of conversation is transcultural fusion dance. What is transcultural dance? We're going to look into the philosophy and dance technique. And we're also going to look into cultural context as well as ethics. I'm quite excited about this topic because when I first came across the term uh, transcultural dance, I felt that it best described my own work as a dance artist. I came across this word the first time um, during a lecture when I was studying dance at the École de Sable in Senegal. And the lecturer called Patrick Akubni was referring to dance artists combining contemporary concepts with traditional sub-Saharan dances. But I felt even though that wasn't particularly applying to me, the word transcultural fusion resonated with me because of my own back da dance background. So I'll talk a little bit about my own dance background. I started dancing in 1996 and I trained in hip hop, flamenco and Egyptian dance. So that was my dance background, that was my dance tradition. I studied that for many years until I started to play around with the concept of fusion. I didn't really give it a particular name, I just started to combine these different dance styles as it, for me, it felt like a natural evolution in my own art as a dance artist. It didn't make sense to pigeonhole these different dance styles. And then I discovered that there was a lot of artists doing similar work in San Francisco, so I started studying with people like Suhaila Salimpour, Carolina Naricchio, Rachel Bryce, and I also discovered Donna Mejia during that time. Donna is actually who inspired me to start studying contemporary dance because her way of combining Egyptian dance techniques with contemporary dance was what really encouraged me to start um, studying at Lawan. So in 2009, I did a diploma course at Lawan where I really got a foundation in ballet, contemporary dance, jazz, and so on. Um, at the time I was 28, so it was quite late to come to these uh, very dem physically demanding dance uh, techniques. But I never had the ambition to become a ballerina or a jazz dancer. I just wanted to inform my own dance because I felt I felt um, limited in my range of motion as a belly dancer, as an Egyptian dancer. So after I studied at Laban, I started studying worldwide different dance techniques. Um, for example, I, I studied for a long time with Rosangela Silvestre and Vera Passos in Salvador in Brazil. And I got all this inspiration from all these different fusion dance artists around the world. Um, and it started to really form a philosophy for myself. So to me, transcultural dance is not a style of dance. I perhaps have my own way of moving because of my own back dance background, but the concept itself, it's a philosophy. So within transcultural dance, perhaps my main ingredient might be Egyptian dance. And then I inform that dance by borrowing from styles such as contemporary dance, ballet, um, flamenco, Indian dance, and even Rwandan dance. So what glues it all together? For me, it's about the aesthetic qualities of these different dance styles. I'm very drawn to the aesthetic of how water moves. So the fluidity of water-like movements is what inspires me. So when I saw contemporary dancers effortless, effortlessly gliding over the floor, that was something that I was drawn to. And when I watched for the first time a, an Egyptian dancer, I was drawn to the undulating and uh, water-like movements of her torso and arms. Uh, similarly to Rwandan dance, when I first saw female Rwandan dancers, I noticed, the first thing I noticed was their effortless gliding motion of their upper body. So that was for me the, the crossover between these different dance styles and for me it made sense to somehow place them together. 
So to talk about my work, I think it is best to describe my work with a couple of examples. So I'm going to show you a couple of pieces that I've recently made. So for this first piece, I'm exploring with fusion between Egyptian dance and contemporary dance. And my reasoning behind this was because this was a big theater production and I was commissioned to do a solo performance. Egyptian dance usually is performed with live musicians on a smaller stage. So a lot of its intricate mu movements get kind of lost on a big stage like that. So using contemporary dance in addition to Egyptian dance technique helps to really fill up the space a little more. But I stuck to this idea of fluid movement so that the two really complement each other really well. I'm still really working with the musicality that is an Egyptian dance. So in this piece, I'm collaborating with three Rwandan artists, two musicians and a dancer. For those that don't know me, I'm currently living in Rwanda, studying traditional Rwandan dances. And in, for this particular video, we were doing a cover of a very well-known Arab song called Lamabada. And the singer here is uh, singing in both in Arab as well as Kini Rwanda, which is the local Rwandan language. And he's playing a traditional instrument called the Inanga. So it's, an, uh, it's a traditional Rwandan string instrument. And one might ask, what is the relevance to combine um, traditional Arab elements with traditional Rwandan elements? For me, there's something in the aesthetic between these two arts, art forms that just works. And the fact that I'm, I have a background in Egyptian dance and I live in Rwanda now, it just felt natural for me to combine these two. So dancing here is Niamu Fasha Yvette. She's a Rwandan traditional dancer and contemporary dancer. And Deo Mune Akazi is on Inanga and Yves Dodo is on the drum. that there's also a link of those two videos in the description below so you can check out the full version yourself. So I want to talk a little bit about dance technique. So when we're talking about dance technique I already mentioned that transcultural fusion or transcultural dance is not a particular style it's more of a philosophy and the philosophy behind the dance technique is uh, about versatility. So to create versatility in the dancer and also to um, value traditional dance as much as modern dance. Um, I don't see any um, hierarchy between different dance styles. So for example, I don't think a codified classical style such as, such as ballet has more value than a traditional folkloric Rajasthani dance from North India. Um, each dance um, gives different movement pathways and each dance gives different qualities of movement. So it is that range that I'm interested in, that spectrum of different colors. So the more dances I study from around the world, um, whether it be traditional, folkloric, uh, community dances, or um, classically trained dances, the more uh, versatility I have as a dancer. So that's really my main aim. It's not necessarily to use these in a performative setting. It is just to have them as um, something to fall back on. So I see them as colors in my repertoire. That is not to say that uh, the more colors you have, the better the art. Uh, for example, I think that we can create a masterpiece using one color um, and we can create some very questionable art with using all the colors of the rainbow. So it's really about um, 
learning what to edit out of your work. So let's talk a little bit about cultural context. So in my humble opinion, I think that when you strip a dance from its culture, especially if that culture is not your own, purely for the satisfaction of your own artistic expression, it's kind of an entitled way of thinking about dance. And I believe that dance and culture cannot be separated. So for that reason, for me, it's very important to study dance at its source. It's a very different experience to study classical Indian dance in a dance studio in London than it is to study the same dance in a temple in North India. Of course, not everybody has the privilege to travel to all the places that um, their dances originated from. But it's important, nevertheless, to try and educate yourself um, on the culture of the dance that you're studying. And I think this is especially important as a fusion dance artist. So you might not um, be inclined to perform um, any dance in its traditional setting. However, I still think it's important to continuously educate yourself on the dance at its traditional setting, as well as the culture uh, of which that dance came from. For me, it's a way to respect and honor my teachers, as well as the culture of uh, of the dance that I'm um, fusing with. So let's talk a little bit about dance ethics. I'm not going to talk a huge amount about this. I've already mentioned some points earlier on, but I really want to recommend this excellent le lecture by Donna Mejia. It's called Key Concepts for Dance Researchers in the Age of Fusion. It is available to rent on the internet. I'll make sure that the link is below in the description. And I recommend to take a pen and paper when you watch this lecture. It's about an hour and 15 minutes long and it's really excellent. It's helped me a lot um, during my time here in Rwanda. And I often refer back to it. So anyway, I hope you find this uh, video helpful. Um, I really love sharing my ideas with you all and I would love you to share yours um, in some of the comments below. So feel free to ask questions or make a comment. Um, also cl click like if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I'm also planning to create a 10 week transcultural fusion dance course in my style of dance. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely write me an email. I'll make sure my email address is also in the description below. Um, it's something that will follow in the near future. So uh, uh, do stay tuned. I hope you have a lovely day.